Today, while I have the T-Mobile variant of the Galaxy Note 3 in-house, we're going to find out whether or not this is the fabric that you're going to want to upgrade to this holiday season. I'm Evan Selleck from PhoneDog.com. This is the T-Mobile Samsung Galaxy Note 3 full video review, which starts right now. Welcome to part two of our video review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 for T-Mobile. Now, with part two, we're just gonna run through some quick changes into what we know as TouchWiz, as well as dig into some speed testing. So, essentially, what you're gonna see here and what you've grown to notice in Samsung devices is that this is TouchWiz. It's still ridiculously colorful and you're not going to get away from that obviously this is what works for samsung and they're not going to change that anytime soon and obviously they don't see a reason to considering that people keep buying their devices so we have things like the samsung hub which is you can shop for content and things like that and again none of this is necessarily new to the galaxy note 3 and which isn't a, necessarily a bad thing. They're not necessarily fixing what isn't broken, but at the same time, they're just kind of optimizing everything to work the way that it should. And here in the Samsung Hub, you can see things like music, video, books, and games. Um, you know, movies right here, The Hangover Part 3, and you can see things like Samsung apps. Now, uh, one of the noticeable things in Samsung widgets is that while you have these options to to you know they're actionable widgets they're they work with you how you want them to work but they don't automatically refresh as you can see right here not that you'd want the samsung hub to refresh automatically all that often i guess but with like weather it will update the time and things like that and you can go into the app let's see if we can load it up here and it's pretty nice in Phoenix right now. I'm sure that'll change at some point today. So auto refresh every six hours, every three hours, and things like that. So that's good. Um, we'll we'll uh, go back. So right here, you can set the refresh to every three hours, every one hour, six hours, or you can refresh it on your own, depending on how you want to check the weather. If you're impatient like me and want to know what the temperature is outside and you live in a place like I do, Sometimes going outside isn't the best option. So we're still looking at the same touch whiz. Nothing has nothing has really changed. And see, let's go back to the uh, lock screen here. So we can do things like this, and right here we can have certain actionable launch screen widgets. And so that's nothing new. We've we've seen that before from devices. However, with Samsung devices it's a little bit trickier because you have to slide down first and then you have to slide up and you can go into settings let's see if we can find those settings real quick and change that so you can have multiple widgets on your device's lock screen so let's see if we can get that lock screen uh, multiple widgets here we go so we can do that and you can also decide to put shortcuts on your lock screen too which is which i found interesting is that in every other Sam Samsung device that I've owned or touched that they always have widgets or you know options down here to choose from so um, that was an interesting shortcut to not find on the lock screen anymore so we can we can pull this down and we can slide it over we can add and we can do things like communications notifications so we have an email right there and we can slide that down if we wanted to and then we just re we, we resized it so this is another one right here you can have add apps and these are your quick action apps that you use more often or you know with a device like this one that we've just turned on you know been playing around with pretty much stock wise and haven't changed much this is what comes up we can add an app right here so let's add app app so there we go it pops up um you can just keep adding screens too so let's see if we can find email gmail google keep keep which was two options, Google Now. Let's let's add a Google Now widget, and then we can resize it as well. So right here, as you can see, we have plenty of different sizes that we can see in the new lock screen. However, it's not quite like 
you know, even stock Android or things like that, because you can't just immediately slide your finger across the screen because it will just unlock it. First, you have to come up here, slide down, and then slide over. So that's what we have to look at with multiple widgets. So on the lock screen anyway. And again, nothing has really changed here on the software side of things. We're still looking at TouchWiz as as we've seen it and whether you know you you've grown to love it or hate it this is this is touch with so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we'll go into our notification center right here oh sorry our notification shade don't want to get it confused with that other device and again you can still see that Samsung as well as carriers and I've turned off the carrier notification for T-Mobile what it can normally do is tell you how many minutes you've used um, how many messages you've sent and what your data usage is like. It's handy, but again, it just takes up room in the notification shade, so I turned it off. Um, but obviously there are still things happening here, like T-Mobile will tell you that your calls will be made over Wi-Fi because it, uh, it has that supported. So um, right here at the top, we've got Wi-Fi, GPS, sound, screen rotation, Bluetooth, reading mode, blocking mode, power saving mode, and screen mirroring, and all, all that good stuff that you can you can change if you want to. So there, you you still have that customization, which is a good thing. So right here at the top, and, and obviously we still have certain features that are, again, just Samsung's touch with. So you can drop it down and you can have all these other options too. So again, you can slide, let's go ahead and slide. And then we have all of our major options that we would ever need. Now that's different from, you know, stock Android because it has kind of that that square and your profile picture and things like that. So again, these are changes that Samsung has made in previous devices that aren't different here in the Note 3. And you can edit these too. So notification panel, you can switch these around. So you can include things like NFC, air view, air gesture, hands-free mode, and sync. So plenty of options to go around and you can you know, change that around with the top button up here, which this is this grid, change it, and obviously changes it into a grid. Or you can go back into your list and have your notification shade back to normal. So we'll get into the speed test. So right here at the very top, we're gonna go ahead and turn off Wi-Fi. We're back on the T-Mobile network, and we're gonna wait, and up here, as you can see, we got 4G LTE on, on this device and it looks like two bars. So I will say that my connection speed hasn't necessarily been that fantastic or my connection in general. So right now it's located in the closest server. All right, let's go ahead and begin the test. And as we do this, I'm going to go ahead and say that that is the fastest speed that, I, that I've been able to receive so far. Um, the Galaxy Note 3 in my area, and I've taken it around a little bit, has basically maxed out at three bars. Um, while inside my, my house, it's been one bar or no service. I've had text messages fail and certain things like that. So while we wait for this upload to finish, we saw a download speed of 17.86 megabits per second and again that's the fastest I've seen and is definitely representative of the connection speed so and again right here we're seeing a hang up with our upload it has still yet to finish but it did stop at 6.89 so that's a good sign um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and stop that so if you're someone who absolutely needs LTE in your area you know, T-Mobile has has the technology now. They're rolling it out to more to more cities all the time, um, and devices like the Galaxy Note 3 do support it. And as you saw, the speeds are definitely worthwhile. So it's definitely something that you are going to want to get your hands on. So it's definitely an added bonus. Um, so we have these when when, when you turn it on, you're going to see things. These four folders were the first things that I noticed inside the app drawer. Um, you have the Samsung folder, which it's interesting because it includes things like Knox as well as Internet S Health S Voice and, and a VPN client, but it also in, just in, it includes the calculator, which is odd 
because you know, that's just a standard feature on the phone. And it's not out here either, so it definitely just gets tossed into the Samsung folder for some reason. You have your standard Google folder, which includes updated versions of Hangouts, uh, you know, G Plus Photos, as well as Play Games. So that's a nice bonus. And and just as a, a side here, let's go into, let's see if we can go into the about the device here. And so you can see right here, it is running Android 4.3 right out of the box. So it is running the, the newest version of Android that is available. You know, Android 4.4 KitKat has been announced, but it's not released yet. So the Galaxy Note 3 is technically launching with the newest version of Android. And I'm not even sure I can remember the last time that happened. Um, so it's good news for the Galaxy Note 3. The other folder that you're going to see here is Galaxy Plus, and you're going to see things like Evernote, Flipboard, Dropbox, Bloomberg Plus, and you get bonuses with Bloomberg Plus, and if you've ever never used Dropbox before on a Samsung device, you also get plenty of storage for free too. Um, sketchbook for Galaxy, as well as Polaris Office 5. Now, I, wanted, I was waiting for this, so we get to the Flipboard, and Flipboard and Samsung have been working together for a little while now, and the result of that is this. So if we slide up from the bottom of the screen, we have this magazine style thing, which is called My Magazine, as you can see, and it says enjoy all available updates in one place. My Magazine recommends content, information, and applications we think you will love. So we'll go into this, and I wanted to wait to set this up because you have a terms of use here, okay, and you have a lot of terms and uses to get through. So you have to agree to the terms and conditions, the privacy policy, another terms and conditions of here and now, another privacy policy, and then you can hit start. So there's plenty of stuff that you're going to want to, or you're going to have to agree to, to get your hands on my magazine. So as we're seeing, this is essentially Flipboard without Flipboard. Um, it's kind of the same distinctive idea. And th again, this is a result of Samsung and Flipboard working together. So this is news. You also have personal here and now as well as social, and then you can, you know, flip through however you want. Um, you can link accounts to social, which include, let's go ahead and look, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Flickr, um, and then plenty of other ones like 500px, Tumblr, and YouTube. So there are plenty of options for my magazine. And again, you can just flip that up and then go about your business. You can also share stories as well as hit the call button or... Uh, messaging, you can do all sorts of different things once you find stories that you want to to look at. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and look at track phone here and then we can hit share. You can share link or share to other apps. So and if we hit back let's go ahead and we can go take a picture and this will go directly into the personal section of my magazine as well. So the My Magazine section is definitely new and exciting, so it's definitely a nice bonus to have, especially if you're a fan of Flipboard. So as you can see, I mean, it's definitely all sorts of Flipboard action happening here. So not a bad thing, certainly not a bad thing. And definitely a nice bonus for anyone who likes to get their news in an easy way, but doesn't necessarily want to download Flipboard for some reason. So there's a nice bonus. So. Again, the Galaxy Note 3, not a lot of changes, but the changes that they have in included are nice additions to TouchWiz and the Galaxy Note 3 in general. Samsung has made a, a tighter focus on making the experience itself better and adding features that just boost that experience in general. So you'll see plenty of familiar things in here and uh, some changes that are either going to be welcomed or not. I think my magazine is probably one of my favorite new features of the device. Um, but then again, I love to get the news. Um, Game-wise, we'll go ahead and here we'll uh, we'll launch Jetpack Joyride from Halfbrick Studios, and we'll we'll go ahead and see how it how it works. So we'll we'll start it up, and as you can see, I'm you know we touch the screen, the reaction on the screen is plenty quick. The sound is able to keep up with what's going on 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 the display, and I've noticed this between games, for for multiple games as well. So 
if you if you play a lot of games the the bigger display obviously helps but what also helps is the the increase in ram as well as as the processor so I didn't notice any lag or stuttering in the games that I played and you know even leaving a game and switching over to going back into regular applications or slipping between home screens was always pretty pretty smooth so that in two part video series is our review of the T-Mobile branded Samsung Galaxy Note 3. It will be launching on Galax on on the T-Mobile network within the first week of October. It will be $199.99 up front and then you're going to have a $21 a month additional cost to the device. If you want to just buy the phone outright, it's going to cost you $703.99. So definitely still a high-end device. That's obviously where Samsung is marketing it and that's exactly where you're going to find it um, even with its fake leather back but plenty of high-end specs inside so it's going to be a device that you're plenty of people are going to be excited to own especially with the nice beautiful display and uptake in specs inside so with that being said this has been our video review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 and thank you